everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. When we left off in yesterday's video, which I am linking up there for you and also in the description box below the video, in that video, I told you that something in this painting gave me an idea. Now, if you haven't seen that video, please watch it first so that you don't have any unanswered questions. I get a ton of comments a day from all the videos on my channel. And as much as I would love to, I cannot answer every single one, though I do read them all. I do answer as many questions as possible, but if it's something that was answered in the video itself, I can't take time to answer it again because it's either that or make a video and I think you guys want me to make the videos more than sit for hours answering comments. <laughs> I mean, at least I hope you do. <laughs> so I'm hoping that's fair enough, okay? So watch the video and if you have a question and you were skipping through the video, maybe really watch the video because chances are the answer is in there. <laughs> Okay, now, while looking at this painting, especially in this area here with the aqua and the little bit of white lacing and where the aqua meets the gold and the gold kind of goes a little tan when the light hits it just so, this kind of reminded me of a beach. And I started wondering, can I dip a beach. So with the same paints I had out from the first dip, minus the red, because I wouldn't be using red in a beach, I decided I had to try. So I scraped up the paint that was on the table. Don't worry, it didn't go to waste. And I spread out a new layer of white paint for my background. Using the two gold paints, I then poured out a little beach. And then I pulled out my aquamarine and sapphire and proceeded to pour out an ocean. The next step was to spread out a thin white layer on my canvas panel and then dip. I pressed a little to make sure the panel made full contact with the paint on the table. You'll notice the little tabs of tape attached to the back of the panel. Those that have helped me lift it up. My goal here was to not lift straight up, but to lift a little bit tilted. So I wanted to lift the left side up just slightly ahead of the rest and then pull up. And I did that so that I would get horizontal bands. And it worked beautifully. Look at how awesome that is and the lacing that's developing. Oh my gosh, I was elated. So after moving the first dip to another spot to dry, I set this one down to continue developing and dry. And oh boy. <laughs> When I come back and look at this one dry, yeah, things changed on this one. <laughs> I, I mean, really? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> You'll just have to see it to understand. But in the meantime, I had paint down on the table, so of course I had to do another dip, right? <laughs> I mean, you would have, right? Yeah, of course. I filled in some thin spots and added a bit of white to the water area as well because I thought maybe a little white in the ocean might be fun. I then prepped another test panel with a layer of white paint and dipped my canvas. This time I wanted to see what would happen if I lifted slightly more straight up than before. And when I turned it over, I saw a bunch of empty spots. So what I did to kind of get a sense of how thick the paint was, was run a silicone tool through the paint for two reasons. One, I also wanted to reorient the paint in a horizontal way for the next dip. 
but it was giving me a chance to see where the paint was thin and where it was thick. A bit more paint got added. And then the double dip. <laughs> I didn't love it either. So I went in for a third dip. <laughs> Now, don't do this at a party, though. You will be kicked out for sure. D d double dipping isn't nice, but triple dipping, yeah, definitely not nice. But in this case, lots of fun. I still wasn't fully satisfied. What I realized I didn't like was the color going to the edge so much this time. So what I did here was push it toward the middle. And then I added more white on the periphery. And dipped yet again. <laughs> Before lifting this time, I rocked the canvas to the left and then the right and then straight up. The goal now was to concentrate the color in the center and it worked. I got a really nice patch of paint in the center so I was now able to play with it. What I realized is that until I get to move paint around myself I'm often not satisfied that I've created something. Like if all I do is pour paint and then let the paint do what it's gonna do, I kind of feel like the paint had all the fun and not me. So I want to get in there and move things a little bit at least so that I feel like I had a say in what happened in the painting more than just picking the colors. A little cleanup on the edges and then filling in with some white and I got to call it done. But how did it dry? And what did the first one morph into? <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> you just have to see it to understand that one. And what happened to all the paint that was still on the table? Ah, the cliffhanger. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next installment of Dips of Our Lives to find out. Tune in tomorrow for answers to those questions and more. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss a thing. And hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying this series. Say hi in the comments. I love hearing from you. And like I said, I read each one. And a super special thank you to my fabulous, fabulous patrons. You are making it possible for me to take time and increase the number of videos. Thank you so much for that. And also to those of you contributing in other ways, like through the wish list or PayPal me, I am loving getting to know you contributors behind the scenes. And I hope I can continue to help you however I can on your creative journeys. I am blessed to have you all in my corner. Thank you all for watching. Go let your creative nature shine, and I'll see you as the dip dries, or the world turns, or whatever. You, you get the idea. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>